going to look at the solo from Wichita Lyman. This is a song written by Jimmy Webb in 1968 for Glenn Campbell. Glenn was looking for a song about something geographical. That was his song assignment for Jimmy Webb, and Jimmy came back with this tune. One of my favorite tunes, uh, definitely up there with uh, uh, By the Time I Get to Phoenix, another fantastic Jimmy Webb song. Um, this solo, for the longest time, I thought it was Carol Kay playing the solo because there's some really nice call and response that happens between the solo and the bass line, and the bass doubles at some great key moments, which just made me think it was the same person, but it's not. It turns out it's Glenn Campbell, and there's some debate whether it's a baritone or a bass six. For me, not so much. I'm pretty decided it's a bass six, but I found some interviews where Carol says that she was explaining to Glenn uh, about the Dan Electro Longhorn that she had, that, hey, you could, you know, play in the key of G on the on the baritone and it will sound in C. Um, and uh, which definitely sounds like a baritone because baritones are usually tuned to either A or B. Um, and so you transpose up a fourth or fifth. So that makes sense. But sonically, it doesn't make any sense to me. It does not sound like a baritone guitar. It sounds like a bass six. And then there's some live footage of Glenn playing a Fender bass six when he plays the song live. So I'm pretty convinced it's a bass six. I tried this on a baritone tuned to normal baritone tunings, and it just doesn't work out. It doesn't sound right at all. So I'm using this Dan Electro, or I should say Jerry Jones, uh, Longhorn double neck, which is a ridiculous and equally fun guitar. Um, and I'm playing this as a bass six. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's break it down and... Uh, We'll talk about how to also do this on electric guitar. Okay, let's break this down. First, real quick to get this out of the way, talk about the tone here. A um, little bit of spring reverb, optical tremolo, uh, going through a Fender Deluxe reverb. You know, that's, that's my tone. I think when I mix this, I did a little bit of play, but pretty much that's it. And there's some room, room mic in there also. Um, and it's a little bright and a little crunchy up top and not super pleasant, but it sounds cool in the mix. That's what's going on with the tone. All right, so to break this down, we're in the key of F. We're starting our first phrase over a B flat over C chord, which is acting like the five chord. It's like a five chord with a flat seven, nine, and 11. So analyzing that first phrase against this chord, you're gonna have root, Four, flat seven, six, five, and then we're playing over the B flat major seven here, so this is gonna sound like a major seven up to the nine. Okay, next chord change goes to A minor seven, and we start our next phrase here. So we're starting on F, so this is gonna sound like the uh, flat six against that A minor nine. I'm kind of peeking at my notes here, uh, just so I don't goof it up for you. So you have flat six, flat seven, flat nine. That's a lot of kind of extensions and altered notes against that A minor. It sounded really cool. So you got that flat nine, root, coming down to the flat six, landing on the C. When we land on the C, that's a new chord change. That's the B flat over C again, another five chord basically. So this would be the root of that. Next measure, we have two chords in one measure, D minor seven to A minor seven. Over the D minor seven, we have this little pickup from the C, and then landing on beat one, we have five, flat seven, five, and then it goes up to that C again, but this time we're over the A minor seven, so it's sounding as a flat three. Then the chord changes to G, and it sounds like a four, five, three, two, root, two, and then the chord changes to D, and that two sounds like a five. Okay, so that's the analysis of it. Um, what is the takeaway from this solo? One of, I think one of the most important things that everyone constantly forgets that most of my favorite solos do this. Can you guess what it is? Just play the vocal melody. Honestly, like everything from tunes like this, Wichita Lineman, to, I mean, you could go back to 
early trad jazz solos, you know, and listen to Louis Armstrong. He's pretty much playing the melody in his solos with little embellishments here and there, all the way right through to Nirvana, you know, where those solos are just basically playing the melody. Sometimes it's the best thing to do. Sometimes we don't want to introduce new musical information. Sometimes we just want to reinforce what is already be, uh, has been established. So play the vocal melody when in doubt. Um, great, I, I want to say trick, but it's definitely not a trick. It's just a great compositional device that I still think gets underused and people forget about all the time. So try to incorporate that in your playing. You don't have a bass six? What? It's fine. Got you covered. Um, I don't bring a bass six out every time I do this song. Uh, and I love singing this song live. And usually what I do is I just drop my low E string down to C. Still lets me play all the chord changes and lets me play the solo. So I gave you the notation and tab for this in drop C, which is how I do it. And you can do everything on that one string there. It actually sounds nice. You can do a little bit, some more glissandos and some things that you don't hear in the original solo that I think um, really help. So, cool thing to do if you ever decide to play this live or if you just want to play this solo, go ahead and drop down to C. If you need to do a faux baritone uh, or faux bass six part or solo, dropping down is a great way to do that. Um, if you can and you're you know making a record or recording where you have the luxury of time, sometimes throwing a heavier gauge string on that low E so you can drop it down will keep it from flapping around a bunch and let you kind of cover all your base six needs. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Please be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and ring that bell and go over to jasonlockland.com to find links to my masterclass, The Speakeasy. You can find links to my Patreon page. You can find links to all of my instructional courses. And if you ever want a private lesson, you could contact me there.